Welcome back to another edition of Cooking with Chunk, the Super Chunk. That's right. Today, we're doing some prime rib. Got a three bone roast here. Prime rib, got it from Sam's, fairly cheap. It actually wasn't too bad considering it's prime rib. They were running a sale. So I actually bought a seven bone roast. I cut down semi half, three, three bone and a, and a four bone. Today we're gonna do the three bone, saving the four bone for, for another day when I've got more people coming over. So essentially, prime rib is basically just a bone in ribeye. Have you ever seen those big cowboy steaks everybody loves with the big old bone on it? That's all this is, except for the bones have been cut down and you got that delicious marbled prime rib with that wonderful spinalis that we love. Oh yes, so what I'm gonna do, gonna get it seasoned up, throw it on the yoder. It's gonna be amazing, beautiful medium rare. Mm, prime rib, if you never had it, mwah. It's gonna be amazing. Let's get started. All right, like I said, three bone prime rib. So what I've done is when I, when I got it from Sam's, I had the butcher actually take apart the bones from the back of the prime rib. Now what that does is it allows me to get to the back of the meat here with seasoning and stuff like that because generally speaking, you're not gonna eat the bones. So what I'm gonna do is when I'm finished seasoning everything up, I'm gonna put it back on, tie it, tie it all up, so that way it cooks as one big roast again and you get the benefit of having the bones there is either a thermal shield, plus there, there's some just a little bit of flavor from the bones, and then when you're done ready to slice, you can just pop them off, make your slices, and we're golden. So definitely something that you need your butcher to do. So secondly, as you can see there's a nice big fat cap here on the top. So what I'm going to do, this is, this is ribeye, like I said, it's got plenty of intramuscular fat. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull this fat cap off. And the best part is, for the most part, you don't even need a knife. You can pull this off with just your fingers. And what that does is it exposes all the, all the meat that we want here and allows us to get seasoning onto the meat because this is all fat and silver skin. It's nothing that you're going to eat anyway. So, and as you can see here, I don't know if you can see this, see this big hard chunk of fat right here? There's no chance that's going to render in the two, two and a half hours that this thing is gonna cook on the smoker. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut this entire top section off. Because look, quite honestly, when you look down the side here, that little bit of meat, granted, you're missing just a little bit, but all this is fat, this whole thing is fat. If I were to cut it in half, look how much meat's inside, hardly nothing. So we're gonna go ahead, you wanna save that, especially if you do any type of sausage making or something like that, save that because that's all good stuff. Now, on the other side, underneath this fat cap, there's lots of silver skin. And what we wanna do is knock this out because this is stuff that you just can't eat. It's never going to render down, it's basically uh, a barrier that prevents us from getting flavor into this meat. So I'm just going to trim this off, get this off as much as possible. Basically start yourself, get yourself a little tab, and your, angle your knife up, and just pull as you go. Just go slow, that way you're not digging too deep into the meat. And then that way, you can get all the seasoning on the meat where it counts. So give me a few minutes, let me clean this up, and I'll be right back to you. Welcome back. Well, I got the old girl all trimmed up. So now what I'm going to do is inject it. I'm using some Butcher's Prime or Butcher's Barbecue Prime dust and some of that delicious Cosmos Q Special Reserve injection. So we're gonna handle that. And I got my little trusty pistol grip injector here. Pretty sweet, huh? All right. So you guys have seen me use this Actually, I don't think I used this on my last, my last video, but um, basically when you inject something, you want to go in a grid pattern, so that way you're not missing any spots. That's the bottom line. You just want to get as much flavor into the meat, make a little pocket, and then throw some injection in there. This pistol grip makes it super easy to get flavor as opposed to the other 
needle style where you got a needle and plunger style. This makes it super easy. So if you, if you can get your hands on one of these, I would absolutely recommend this. The reason I'm injecting this also is because a lot of times when you, when you cook prime rib, oh yeah, that one squirted way up. When you cook prime, prime rib, it, it has a tendency to just lose its flavor when you get to the very, very center of the beef. Because essentially when you cook prime rib, it's, you're cooking for the outside. Yeah, that was a good one. You're, you're putting all the seasonings on the outside. This, this will get it way down in the meat where it counts. So, all right, I think we're about done there with that. So, as you can see, I've lost some, but I mean, I probably put maybe half a cup of injection inside the meat here. So, I'm actually just gonna use the, the leftover injection that I have here as a, as a binder, as opposed to the, uh, using olive oil or something like that for my rub. So, let me, uh, let me clean this up real quick, get it started. And I got something special for you. So Same I kind of got this cleaned up, a little mopped up just here and there. Left a lot of the excess raw or the excess injection on the meat so that we can use it as binder, like I said. Um, also, if you notice, I trimmed up most of the, the excess fat on here. I left some a little bit here, here and there, but it's all good. So, so now I got to season the meat. And for that, I have a little special helper. So special helper. <laughs> Say hello. hello. All right, so this is my little princess and she loves to help me cook. And today I promised her since she's, there's no school today that she could help. So the first thing I wanna do is get a good base of salt, pepper, garlic down on it. And for this, I use the Killer Hogs AP Rub. So let me get her some gloves, even though I didn't glove up for the first parts because Sorry, Nick Williams, but you're just not here, buddy. And I'm a little upset about it. But I'm gonna go ahead and glove up now. They're big. All right, there's one. Let's get the other one on. All I gotta say is anytime you can cook with your kids, let them be involved. It's, it's so much fun as a parent to watch them, watch them help you and, and learn things that they've, they've never done before. So she loves, watch, she loves watching and helping me cook and she also loves eating the food that we cook. So first things first, let's go ahead and start. What we're gonna do is, is just get, get a good, you can put it on. We're gonna get a good base of flavor on this, okay? Here, I can do it. You wanna pat it in? Help me pat it in. All right, let's turn it over. Get this side. All right, like I said, I'm not going very heavy on this because we do have extra herbs and spices that we're putting on. <laughs> All right, so now comes the fun part. So what I've done is I've chopped up probably two tablespoons of rosemary, fresh rosemary, two tablespoons of fresh thyme. I mix that with a little minced garlic, probably six or seven cloves. And I mixed it with some uh, olive oil and some Montreal steak seasoning. This is gonna be the main flavor profile for this roast. So Caroline, if you wanna have some fun, go pat it on just like some paste. There you go. Let's get it all over. So I mix it with olive oils just to get it a little more moist and that way it'll stick a little better. All right, let's flip it over and we'll do the other side. Now this is where it counts, so make sure you get a good coating all over the meat even on the sides and everywhere. So I made up enough here for, for this five pound, three bone roast here. Um, obviously, if you have a bigger roast, you're gonna have to uh, adjust it as necessary. Let's get it under there, let's get it everywhere. All right, good job. Okay, let's, let's take off your gloves. 
Try not to touch anything, okay? I'm gonna put those right over there. All right, so now what I want you to do is, can you hand me one of the strings? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to reattach the bones, like I said, so that, can you just lay it down? No. Just sting, string it right across. There you go. Reattach the bones so that I can get that benefit of that thermal barrier and also that, that extra flavor that might come out of the bones. And plus it helps it keep a good shape. Now you can cook this just fine without, without any bones, um, but I mean, why not give yourself every advantage? It comes with, comes with bones. Why not just use the bones? Use it to your advantage. So there's one, can I have the other ones? Lay it down. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting it in between the bones. Now I know some people like to gnaw on the bones when they're through. So what I'm going to do when I'm finished putting these back on is I'm gonna hit these with a little AP rub. So that way it has, uh, has a little bit of flavor. So, all right, can I have the other one, the last one? Just lay it down. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna go this way with it on this. That way it kinda, kinda holds together. Now remember, whenever you're cooking something like this, the, the more you can keep it into a, a solid shape together, the more even it's gonna cook. If you, have, if you have things that are spread out and some spots are thinner than the other, things like that, then it might cause it, might cause it to cook a little uneven. So here it is. As you can see, it looks pretty even. Bones are good, everything's set. So I'm gonna season this with a little AP rub and then we're gonna put it out on the smoker. Stand by. All right. So today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640. I've got it filled full of oak, cherry, and beech pellets because that works very, very well with with uh, beef. So I got it running, I set it up, got the temperature set for 275. Additionally, I have a smoke tube filled with the same pellets and I'll show you basically all you do is you take this, this amazing smoke tube, you fill it full of pellets, then you light it, let it burn for a little while, and then you blow it out. And what it does is it provides just an extra bit of smokiness to whatever it is that you're cooking because the pellet grills are 100% notorious for not being very smoky. So they burn so efficiently and so cleanly that you get that light, very thin blue smoke that, every, that everybody wants for good barbecue. So I'm gonna poke this right up here on the top shelf. I'm putting it in this rack just to make it easy transport to and fro. So. The right side of my grill is generally hotter than the left side, so I'm going to put it right here on this rack. I'm going to close the lid. I'm going to come back in an hour, check it for, uh, just give it a check, and put a temperature probe in it. Quite honestly, for an hour here, it's not going to get to the temp I need. I'm going to run it to about 130, take it off, let it rest, so that way it carries over to around 135, that perfect medium rare. So let's get this party started. We'll see you back in a few. Oh, hey, well, it's been about an hour, so I'm gonna open this lid up, see what we got. Mm, yes, yes, beautiful, working that nice crust. I'm gonna hit the temperature probe. I'm looking something less than 100 degrees. Looks like we're running right around 76, 77 degrees. Let's make sure we're good here. Oh, I'm on the bone, sorry, I'll back her down. This side's cooking a little quicker than this other side, obviously, because it's just a little bigger, so. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put a probe in it. I'm gonna run it through the little hole here. I'm gonna stick it right down here in the middle. Wait till it reaches temp. We're looking, like I said, actually, I'm gonna try something new today. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to run it till about 115 degrees. I'm going to crank this thing up to 450 degrees, let it get super hot, let it build a super nice, wonderful crust on the outside. Watch the temps. When it hits 125, I'm going to pull it off, let it rest, 130, 135. And then I got another surprise for you. I've got a bunch of veggies that I'm going to go ahead and roast while this thing's resting. Got some fennel, potatoes, some new potatoes, some carrots, some onions. Put them in a sheet tray, season them up, stick them in here, let them roast off while this thing's resting. It's going to be a good, good family meal. So stick around. I'll let you know when this thing hits temp. We'll come back out, crank it up. We'll take a look at it. Be back in a little bit. All right, we're back. <laughs> so while we're waiting for the prime rib to be done, I'm also going to roast some veggies. So I've already cut up some potatoes and some fennel and some carrots. Caroline, if you want to start putting those on the tray. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roughly chop a, uh, a nice sweet Vidalia onion, onion here to go along with it. You want, you want some fairly big, decent big slices here. So I'm just going to make it nice and, nice and big and rough here. Um, basically, just for a little tip here, I don't know if anybody knows this, don't store your potatoes with your onions. That's why the onions aren't in this, in this bowl here, because the onions will, will definitely make the potatoes, it'll accelerate their, their quote unquote ripening process, and it'll cause them to become gross. All right, so I've cut up some, like I said, some fennel, some onions, some carrots, and some potatoes, and just gonna spread them all out here in the pan. If anybody doesn't know what fennel is, it's basically comes in a bulb form and also stalks. Um, if you would compare it to its flavor, I guess you could say it would be black licorice. Um, however, it's very mild and it adds a lot of depth to flavors. So you'll see it a lot in when you're roasting chickens and stuff like that in the oven. So if you don't like black lic licorice, it's perfectly fine. Um, just, I would suggest just giving it a try because you, you never know, you might actually like it. It's actually pretty good. It's a lot better than you would think. I'm gonna go wash my Okay. So from here, just spreading everything out on a pan. Um, I'm gonna hit it with some olive oil just to get it coated. And from there, I'm gonna hit it with the AP rub for that salt, pepper, garlic. Done with that. Mix these all up, make sure everything's all nicely coated. And what I'm gonna do is the prime rib is almost up to temp. It's looking at right around 110 right now. That's fine for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna put these veggies on the bottom, bottom shelf, actually underneath the prime rib so it might be able to catch up any juices that might fall. And I'm gonna go ahead and bump up that, my yoder to 450 degrees. Actually, I'm, I'm going to do it to 400 and let it, uh, let it roast these veggies all night. Nice. So, Caroline, can you actually sprinkle that? What I have in here, it's okay. What I have is some of the rosemary and thyme that I, that I chopped up earlier for the prime rib. I saved a little bit just to throw on here along with the, with the AP rub. So, I'm going to get this all seasoned up. I'll meet you right back outside in a few minutes. Give a thumbs up. All right, we're here. As you can see, my my Weber I Grill 2 here, which I like to use, is ah just hit 115. We're perfect. So take a look at that prime rib. Mmm. Go ahead and just test this to make sure that we're on point. Same. Beautiful. All right, good, we're temping out perfectly. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and throw these veggies on here, right here on the bottom rack, like I said, underneath the, uh, the prime rib, and I'm gonna crank this thing up to 400 degrees. And this is why you buy a Yoder. Makes it a lot easier. So that's going to get rolling. 
Keep an eye on the temps. Like I said, I'm going to pull the Prime River off right at 120, somewhere between 120 and 125. It all depends on how I feel here in probably the next 20 minutes. We'll get that done, get the veggies roasted while, while the prime rib is resting, and we'll make some delicious slices. I can't wait. Stand by. All right, so we've hit temp. We're running at 125. Right now, let's take a look at this thing. Oh, wow. How's that look? It does look really good, huh? Nice, got a nice golden caramelization. Veggies are running. Yeah, it smells really good too, yeah. The veggies are running really great. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to pull this temperature probe here, take this delicious prime rib, throw it down here in this pan. I'm gonna cover it with a sheet of aluminum foil. I'm gonna take it inside, let it rest for a little while until our veggies get done. As you can see, they're, they're looking really good. Mmm, man. I wish you guys were here to smell this. There's nothing like the smell of roasted veggies. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give them a, give them a good twist here. All right, I'm gonna pull this probe out of here, out of the probe port, close this back down. All right, so once these veggies get done, this rest probably about at least half an hour, hour longer would be better. We're gonna get these veggies off, get this sliced up. We're gonna take a nice little, nice little bump. Man, but first, tell me if that, does, that doesn't look like fantastic. And that's what I call a big old pan of roasted veggies. All right, I'll see you back in a few minutes. All right. The meat's been resting for about 45 minutes. The veggies are all done. They're nice and roasted, everything's soft. I pulled them off before the carrots turned into mush. Um, but as you can see, the potatoes, they're done. The carrots have a little bit of texture to them. I would say they're al dente. <laughs> Anyways, all right, let's get to the old, the old star of the show here. All right, first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull off these strings that I put on and separate, separate the bones. So let's get started on that. Yes, yes, yes. Get to this little, little guy right here, perfect. Look at that. Pull away from the ball. <laughs> goodness gracious. Look at that right there. Oh my goodness. That smells fantastic. <sighs> Man, this is going to be good. Move these out the way just a little bit. Give a nice slice on the end here. Now prime rib, you can slice it however it is that you want. <sighs> yes. I like nice thick slices. Man, look at that. Look at that. Beautifully pink in the middle. A nice medium rare. Maybe a little medium on the ends. Oh yeah, as soon as we get in the middle here, it gets a little bit darker red. You can see some of the, the injection. It's working in there, it's just a little bit brown. But, I mean, I don't know what else there is to say about this, so. Let's, let's give this a try. I'm super excited. I'm gonna take this piece from the middle because I like my prime rib nice and medium rare. Let me try this here. You know I want a piece from that smell it's here. Mmm. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, there is nothing better than prime rib. I don't care what anybody says. Let me get a little slice from the middle here. Mmm, beautiful. Mmm. That injection, it works so well. It's so wonderful. All right, Caroline, you wanna try a piece? Come around here and try it. Good, right? Oh, yeah, on the edge. You want to try a middle piece? Okay. Here, take a bite out of that. 
take a bite of that middle piece. <laughs> Gotta love kids. Here, try the middle piece. There's no spice. Mmm. Mmm, my God. It's so good. It's good, right? All right, so now I'm gonna try just obviously give these a little uh, little taste here. They're probably still screaming hot, but whatever. My skin on my tongue will grow back, right? Mmm. That carrots, God, I love carrots. They're so sweet, especially when they're roasted. Try the fennel here. Mmm. Mmm, my goodness. And then some potatoes. I'm telling you what, if you've never had prime rib on a smoker, go out and buy a smoker today. Not tomorrow, today, and make this happen. Mmm. -hmm. Very good, right? You wanna try carrot? Well, the potatoes are a little hot. Let's try that carrot. Mm. <laughs> Is it hot? Yeah. All right. Well, maybe she won't try carrot till later. But anyways, thanks for watching. If you like this video, we're putting out more all the time. Tune in, Prime Rib. I've got other videos you can watch on how to do. Maybe next time we'll do something else. I'm not sure. If, if yeah, if you don't have school, you can join me. But if you'd like to see me cook something, by all means, give me a comment, shoot me a text, whatever it is that you want want to see. But until then, mm. <laughs> you want another piece? Mm. Nothing better than a child who wants more of your cooking. There you go. All right. Is this a middle piece? Yep. All right. Until next time, keep on grilling. We'll see you later. Bye.